We give God thanks. Praise God. This mountain shall be removed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. It is not by might. It is not by power, but by His Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord. Jesus said, For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because He has given me the authority, the anointing. Hallelujah. God's Spirit. This mountain shall be removed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not by might, not by power. Glory be to God. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. God, you can remove every mountain. God, you can remove every hindrance, every barrier, Lord. God, you can make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord. God, even in our weakness, so oh God, in our, our disobedience, our rebelliousness, God, you can still, oh God, Lord, make a way. You can still see us through. God, you can tunnel us through. You can take us through the tunnel. Hallelujah. God, you can take us through the darkness. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise today for your consolation. Hallelujah. God, you are on our side. You are on our side. We are your sons and your daughters, oh God. We cry out to you, Lord, in our weakness. We cry out to you in our pain. We cry out to you, oh God, in our shortcomings. Have mercy upon us, oh God. In our sicknesses, oh God, in our poverty, we cry out to you, Lord. Remember your people today, Lord Jesus. Oh God, what we cannot do. You are more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all the things that we should ask or think. By the power of God that worketh in us. Emmanuel, 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 Hosanna, God with us, save us. Save us today, Lord, save us. Deliver us, oh God, deliver us. By your strong and mighty power, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. We give God thanks. Lord, we honor you today. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. We give you honor. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness towards us, for your mercies towards us, O oh God. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary, that paid the price of our sin debt. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. We are going to pick up from where we left off in the book of Colossians chapter 2. And we will continue in our verse-by-verse -verse study from verse 4. Praise the name of the Lord. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 4. You need to have a Bible. You need to be following along in your Bible. Uh, we are not really going after goose, goose bump. But if goose bump come, take it. But you need to watch in the scripture and try to understand it. You know, Satan, I'm not afraid of goose bump, you know. <laughs> not even me afraid of goose bump. But let's just say it. <laughs> What the devil is afraid of is the Word of God. The Word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And if you can get a hold of the Word of God, if you can understand what the Word of God is saying, it empowers you. The Bible tells us that His people was destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. And if we don't know the Word of God, our defense, our spiritual defense is broken down. The Bible tells us about a city that is without wall. Broken down and without wall have no defense. In olden days, cities have to be surrounded by walls. You know, you know what time Toronto don't have no wall around it. <laughs> Toronto is not a safe city. <laughs> don't, got no wall around it. <laughs> Amen. They used to surround all of these cities with wall. You know, and uh, sometimes the wall is so thick that you can ride a chariot on, on the wall. You know, the wall of Jericho was a, a, a wall. It was like a street up there. And they, it's so wide that uh, 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 I think one or two chariots could ride uh, alongside each other uh, on that wall. It was a thick wall. But the Lord commanded Joshua 
uh, to walk around the walls, and they walk around that wall seven times, and it was destroyed. It fell to the ground. Praise the Lord. So we need to have security, and our security today is not in the physical walls. Our security is in the Word of God, in the blood of Jesus Christ, the promises of God, leaning on the everlasting arms of God. So we pick up today in verse 4 of Colossians chapter 2. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, have mercy upon us today, Lord, as we open up your word, Lord. God, cleanse us, wash us, pour us, purify us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Be gracious towards us there, Father. Dispense, Lord, food to us. Feed us with manna from above. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. God, we pray, O oh God, that you'll just strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Even as we open up the word today, let our eyes, O oh God, Lord, be cleansed, be opened, so that we can see the truth that is in your words today. Bless us, O oh God, in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Glory to God. Uh, it tells us in verse 4, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Now, last week, we talked about watching each other's back. We talk about um, mature women and men in the congregation um, looking out for one another. The mature men look out for uh, the younger men. You know, be a father to a younger ma uh, person, a younger man, you know, in the congregation or in your neighborhood. The mature women to be um, a mother. Be a mother. Even though you don't have daughters, be a mother to somebody a young person in the congregation, somebody who you see um, might be making some mistake, might be making some bad decision, bad ch choices. We need to be mothers and fathers to them. It is not just up to the pastors and the elders of the church who have that responsibility, but each of us have the responsibility to watch out for the people that are around us. Praise the Lord. Because of the false teachings and the false prophets that were out there, the Apostle Paul continued to warn the church at Colossae. You know, um, in the book of um, Jude, Jude, he had a lot of names. You should read the book of Jude when you have some time. It's, it's only one chapter. And Jude had some, have some names for the false prophets. He called them um, cloud without water. You know, you see a cloud going and you put your, your bucket out or you put your container out, figure that there's some rain coming. It's a cloud that is empty. That is what the false prophet is. They are cloud without water. And he called them, uh, uh, they are well that have no water in it. They dry up. And uh, they, they, they are all kinds of uh, name that, uh, um, you know, was given to these false prophets. The Apostle Paul in in one of his uh, uh, epistles, he called them dogs. And uh, these are dangerous men, dangerous teachers that was in the church during the time of the Apostle Paul. And uh, he wasn't shy in warning the congregation about these men uh, that was teaching these um, false doctrines. So he, he said in verse 4, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing word. Paul said he's saying this so that the, his people, the congregation in Colossae will not be beguiled. The word they beguile, it means to trick or to um, outsmart you, to, to work you over. We will say back in the, in the islands to give you a 619. You know, they want to beguile you. is when somebody come alongside of you and they whisper um, information in your ears that is not truthful. They try to get you off the right track. They try to um, sidetrack you. And Paul is saying, don't let these false teachers sidetrack you. Let them beguile you. Beguile is used back in the book of Genesis when uh, the, the woman, she was there. I don't know where Adam it was. Where was he anyway? <laughs> He probably went out to work. <laughs> Adam, he wasn't there with his wife and the devil came in the form of this serpent. And uh, the Bible says, beguile, outsmart, outwit, trick. Uh, he's a trickster. And this is the same word is used in here where the false prophets and the false 
teachers are concerned. A lot of false teachers today are tricksters. And their words are very smooth. They are uh, a snake oil salesmen. They could become real car dealers. You ever go on a, a car lot trying to buy a vehicle? If you're not careful, <laughs> they will sell you any kind of drunk that they have on the lot. And you'll walk out there thinking that you get something good. And this is what some of these preachers um, place themselves, this is the situation that they place themselves in. So Paul is warning the church, don't be beguiled, don't be outsmart with enticing words, sweet words. You know, it doesn't matter how nice the preaching sounds, if it's not Bible based, it is words that is will, trying to entice you, it is to beguile you. It is words that is not good that we're not supposed to pay no attention to. Hallelujah. We must only give attention to what is from the Word of God. If it's not from the Word of God, it is garbage. Praise the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter who is saying it. As I said before, how many times we keep saying, if it's, not, if it's new, it is not true. And if it's true, it's not new. So all of these new things that we are hearing, you know, in the church, and new revelation, and new vision, and new this, and new trips to heaven, and all of that. There are so many people out there who have trips to heaven. <laughs> trips to heaven, it's a big thing these days. Everybody wants to have a trip to heaven. You know, go up to heaven and walk and talk with Jesus and all of that. And they'll come back from their trip to heaven and write a book. That's the first thing they're going to do. They write a book so that they can pull in uh, money from their trip to heaven. But we must not be beguiled by these things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing. The Apostle Paul, he gave an explanation about a man in, uh, was it uh, Second Corinthians? One of those books, he gave an explanation about a man that was taken up into the third heaven. And when you read it, you can see that he was talking about himself. Who do you think that man was? It was Paul, but he didn't, he, he disguised it in a way so people will not know he was talking about himself. Because he didn't want to take any credit, you know, because he didn't want to be lifted up. And people today, you know, <laughs> they, they, they're given so much different um, things that they see in heaven and so many trips they make to heaven. But here, Paul have a genuine experience where he was taken up into the third heaven and he don't even want to make it known that it was him. Praise the Lord. So don't be beguiled. Uh, it tells us in verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. What Paul is saying here, he was absent from the Colossians church. Why? Because he was in jail. Paul, in our words today, we call him a jailbird. He was always in jail. Always going to jail for preaching the gospel, representing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he was in jail. So he was saying to them, with all of this false teaching and false prophets that was going around in the church, I am not there, I am absent in the flesh, but I am with you in the spirit. What he's saying is that you have my full backing. You have my full support. I am behind you. And hear what he said. Even while he was in prison, he said he was joined. Could you imagine that? You in jail in the Roman dungeon. And he said that he was rejoicing on their behalf. Paul, forget about what he was going through. What may happen to him. He may have lost his head. But he was joined on the behalf of the, the, the Colossian um, believers. And hear what he said, Behold in your order and your steadfastness, the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Now, it's important, important for us to understand here. When he said here, Behold in your order, he's talking about a military formation. He's talking about an army that in formation and uh, organized and stand together and ready to face the enemy. And what Paul is saying with all of these false doctrine and false teaching that is going on, he is encouraging the church at Colossae. He said, church, I know that you're going to stand strong as, army, as an army, as soldiers in God's victorious army. You're going to stand together against these false teachers. 
and you're going to be in formation and you will be ready. You will be on guard. You will be ready to attack and to defend yourself, to defend the congregation against these false teachers. He said, steadfast. Your steadfastness. He said, be whole in your steadfastness. Steadfast means to stay strong. You stay in one position. You're not moving. You're not being shaken. You stand strong. Hallelujah. He's saying to them that even in the face of these false doctrine and false teaching, you have to stand strong. Church, today we have to stand strong. We have to be prepared to deal with these false teachings that is going around today. You know, one of the false teachings that is coming out today is... They talking. They call it what? Chris Lamb. It's where um, uh, some um, men in uh, Christianity today, in Christendom, they want to bring Islam and Christianity together, and they're trying to bring Islam and Christianity and Christianity together. So they call it Chris Lamb. <laughs> but uh, and they're trying to tell us that the God of the Muslim is the God of the Christian. The Muslim God is Allah. Allah is not Jehovah. Allah don't have any son. Jehovah, he have his son and his son is Jesus Christ. You know, uh, uh, people must understand that the Muslim, the, the Muslim believe in Jesus, but you know how they believe in Jesus? They believe that Jesus was just a prophet. He was just an ordinary prophet. And why they believe in Jesus? They believe that Jesus is returning. And guess why Jesus is coming back? Jesus is coming back to correct, to correct all the Christians who have belief about him. All of the belief that we have about Jesus. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Believe in his ascension. Believe that Jesus is God. Jesus is coming back. The Muslims said that to correct us. And when he comes to correct us, if we don't um, listen to him... He is going to kill us. It's just like how they kill people when people don't listen to them. They said that the penalty for not listening to Jesus when he come back to correct, he will execute every person who don't listen to him. And that is the kind of God the Muslim is serving. And the, the doctrine today is that Christianity and the Muslim will come together. But brethren, that is a false teaching. It's false. It's satanic. And we as children of God, we have to stand up. You know, I know it's not politically correct to say that Christianity is exclusive. If you say Christianity is exclusive, it's not politically correct. You have to say, well, all of us serve in the same God, you know. And like some major um, leaders in Christendom that say, you know, there is one mountain and there are many roads leading up to that mountain. And once you find yourself in one of that road to go up to that mountain and you reach the top of the mountain, that is all that counts. But it's not so. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no many ro roads to go to God. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, anybody who climb up some other way is a thief and a robber. Hallelujah. He is the only way, so we have to be on guard for these um, doctrines and these teachings that are coming out today. And it will come out from major men in Christianity. You know, anything the world put out, the church is so uh, in a hurry to pick it up. There's a crazy dance that they have on the internet. Uh, they call it the shakedown, something that starts somewhere in Harlem. And uh, it's in the church now. The young um, young people, leaders, the young uh, youth leaders, them picking up this crazy satanic dance, making all of these different signs and, you know, demonic. It came out from Africa. It's witchcraft. And uh, you should see, check it out on the, the internet. The, that's put in, I think it's a shakedown, whatever they call it. And you see this dance that they have, crazy dance. It's a popular dance in the world. Satanic, demonic dance. And uh, a lot of young people, they're getting into it and they're bringing it into the church. But brethren, we have to stand against these things. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, these things are not of the Father but of the world. The world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. 
Hallelujah. And uh, Paul, he said that he was looking, even though he wasn't there, he was beholding the way how the congregation, he's encouraging them. We have to encourage the church, encourage people. He was encouraging them. He said, listen, I see you. I'll, even though I'm not there, you stand in, in formation. Just like you are in the army, in the army of the Lord, and you're steadfast. You are ready to defend yourself against these false teachers. Hallelujah. Steadfastness. We have to be steadfast. We have to be grounded. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Grounded. Hallelujah. Steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is very important, brethren. Hebrews said, Cast not away therefore your confidence which have great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, that you should inherit the promise. We have to stand, hallelujah, stand by faith, stand for faith, hallelujah. Stand our ground, brethren. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It tells us in verse, five, in verse um, 6, Praise the Lord. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Paul is saying here to these Colossian believers, at the beginning, when you receive Jesus, continue that way. Don't change. You don't need anything new to come along. There were so many new things that were popping up in Paul's time. And Paul is warning them, continue on that old pathway. Don't be sidetracked or distracted by the new stuff that they're bringing in and they want to merge with Christianity. Don't allow these things to influence you. Continue that same way. Don't change. Hallelujah. Stay on that straight and narrow way. As you have received a Christ Jesus the Lord. You see, you notice there? When you receive Jesus, you receive Jesus what? As the Lord. He is Christ. The word Christ means the anointed one. Christ is, in the Greek, it also means Messiah. In uh, um, the anointed one in Messiah, uh, in, in, in Greek, and in the, the, the Hebrew language, it is the Messiah. It all have the same interpretation. The anointed one, it means to pour on, rub in. The anointed one, Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So, when we receive him, we receive him as, as Christ. And uh, Jesus, uh, when, uh, at the, uh, when uh, Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit, the angel Gabriel said to her, You shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So that word Jesus means to save Christ, the anointed one. He is anointed to save. This is what he is anointed to do, to save and to deliver, to rescue He's still in the rescuing business. So we receive him as Lord. A lot of people today in the church, they don't want to recognize Jesus as Lord. They see him as Savior, but they, see him, they don't see him as Lord. You, Jesus can't be, he can't be a Savior if he's not your Lord. I mean, when, when, when they don't want to recognize him as Savior because they figure that they don't want him to, to come under his leadership, come under his command. So he provides salvation But they can't acknowledge him as Lord. But Jesus, the same Jesus, is anointed Lord. God anoint him. God the Father. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory and to the honor of Almighty God the Father. He is Lord and King. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he said, so walk in him. The Christian life, it is a pilgrimage. We are on a pilgrimage. And we are pilgrims. And we are going through this world. And we have to walk in the Lord. Walk in the scripture. Talk about the way how you conduct yourself. The way how you carry yourself. The Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. So that your Father in heaven can be glorified. Hallelujah. Walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship. One with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sin. So we have to walk in him. Listen to what he said in verse 7. We have to be rooted. Rooted. It's an agricultural word. 
rooted. It means to be planted. You take root. You're deep down. You're grounded. You're settled. We need to be rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you can't be a tumbleweed and expect to be somebody that is rooted. Tumbleweed that rolling all over the place. No place settled. Rolling stone, gather no moss, you know, you know, settle down no way. God wants us to be grounded. He don't want us to be transplant. You know, always digging up from here and you plant yourself over here. You come back there and you go back there. We have to be grounded. I don't know if any one of you have this experience. When I was home in the islands, you know, growing up as a boy, I guess I wanted to be a farmer. You know, I take the little, you know, the dry corn or the peas and you go down in the backyard and you plant it. And then, you know, maybe a few hours after you go back and you're searching, you're digging it up. Or the next day you dig it up to see if it's growing. No, it's not growing. You have to leave it alone. It had to be grounded. It had to be rooted. Jesus said about the, 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 the foolish man that built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descend and the flood come and the wind blow and beat upon that house, he said that it fell. Why? Because it was, it was upon the sand. It wasn't rooted. It wasn't grounded. But he talked about the wise man that built his house upon the rock. And when the rain came, the flood descended, the wind blew it and beat upon that house. It fell not. Why? Because it was on solid grounds. We need to be rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot be tumbleweed. You know, and when, when I say tumbleweed, you know, what means you believe in Jesus? One minute, you know, you believe and you are excited about Jesus and then you become all depressed and you, oh, I don't know, I don't know about this Jesus thing. I don't know about this going to church thing now. You know, I tell you I go to church and, you know, there's nothing, uh, when I go there, it's not excited. Listen, you got to be rooted. Even when you go to church and it seems as though it's not exciting to you. You have to be rooted. You have to be grounded. You have to be planted. Hallelujah. You can't be a tumbleweed. You can't be a, a transplant kind of plant, you know, up and down and, you know, rooted up and planted and rooted up. And pl no, we have to be rooted and build up in Him. Build up in Him. It's talking about progress. You have to progress. You have to, you have to have growth. You have to have increase. So personally, as a Christian, each of us, we need to grow. I am only responsible to feed people. I am only responsible to feed you as a congregation. I am not responsible for your growth. And I'm saying here to you in Straight Gate Ministries, for the amount of studying and uh, explanation and questions and uh, input that we have in here in our congregation, every person here is supposed to be growing. You're supposed to be growing. You're supposed to know what the Bible is saying to you because you have an opportunity this is not uh, some church that you go to and they will say, say me, amen, somebody. Amen, hallelujah. And every time the preacher preach, he say one word, two words, he say amen, and he say hallelujah. No, we are giving you the interpretation of the scripture. Even uh, the elders, if you notice, when the elders, them come up here. When the elders, them come up here, these guys pulling a text and they unfolding a text. They unpacking the text and so that we can have an understanding of what is taking place. And this is what we need, brethren. So we have to be rooted and grounded. Hallelujah. Build up. Progress. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. We have to desire the sincere milk. You have to have a desire. A spiritual appetite. For the word of God. You have to become hungry. And thirsty. For the righteousness of God. So that you can be filled. So he said build up. And establish. Establish. When, you know, he using, he putting it in all different kind of ways so that we can't miss it. Establish. It means that you dare, you sit down and you settle and you, you know, you're in your, in your right place. Nobody can shake you out of your place. We need to find our place in God and you settle yourself in Him. Establish ourselves in Him. Establish in the faith. Now, in the doctrine, he's talking about the doctrine, the Bible teaching, all of the Bible teaching, we need to establish ourselves in it. Sanctification, born again, justification, you know, all of these things. We need to establish ourselves in these things, brethren. Hallelujah. As you have been taught. So you see, Epaporus, the man who, the brother who established this church, 
he was doing a good job. And Paul is saying that you have been taught. The word was communicated to you. So you have to build yourself up in it. You have to grow. You have to increase. Hallelujah. You have to de de develop yourself. And listen what he used again. Look at that word. Abounding. Praise God. Abounding there. When he talk about abounding, he's talking about a river that overflow its bank. With all of the teaching that these uh, brethren in Colossae received, Paul is saying, by now, you should be overflowing your banks. And it's the same thing we are saying here to you today. The amount of teaching that we are getting in this local congregation. We should be overflowing our banks. You know, this is not a time for you to be just dripping and you just have a little trickle. You, the blessings of God, should be overflowing in your life. You should be excited about the things of God. You should be stirred up about the things of God. You should be like a river that overflowing its bank, abounding, daring with thanksgiving. So you see, after you overflow in your bank, you say you're going to give thanks. You know I'm a true person. The way you know a mature Christian is by the way that person gives thanks. The way that person gives thanks. You know when somebody is mature in the Lord. By the way that they give thanks, they appreciate God. They give thanks. Things not going too good to them, they still, I thank God, I thank you. You know, sometimes you only have a glass of water. I remember back in the islands, people only have a glass of water, a cup of water. And they used to give thanks. They say grace over it. They give thanks for it. Giving thanks. Paul said, in whatever state I am, therewith I long to be content. Whether I have, whether I don't have, I long to be content. I am content. I am giving thanks. We must give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Brethren, we need to be thankful. We need to be thankful to God for all that He has done for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So in verse 5, Paul get right back to it. He's not leaving it. He said, beware. In other words, beware. It means be an alert. Open up your eye. Open up your eyes. Behold. Look. Look on every hand and every side. Look up. Look down. Look around. Behold. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That word spoil is not talking about when somebody, uh, you go to the barber and he tried to cut your hair and he didn't cut it right. And he said, that guy spoiled my head. Spoiled my head. He's not talking about fruits. Rotten fruits. You know, or you have something that's spoiled and you can't make use of it. That word spoil is uh, something that used to take place when people go out to war. People go out on the battlefield and they capture the enemy. All of the prized possession that the enemy has, those soldiers, they will take it as bounty or loot. They will take it. And that's how they used to receive their salary most of the time. So what Paul is saying is that you have something valuable. We have something valuable. So he said, beware, be on guard, be on alert. Lest any man spoil you. Don't make nobody spoil you through philosophy. Philosophy, the word philosophy there is the love of wisdom. In uh, Paul's time, there was these false prophets who loved wisdom. And they figure that they have a higher level of wisdom. And they have the secret knowledge. And they have access to the secret knowledge. And what they were saying to the church at Colossae, Jesus was not enough. You need something higher. You need something along with Jesus. You can't just survive on Jesus. So with their higher knowledge and their, their philosophy, with their, 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 their love of wisdom, they figure that they have some secret knowledge. They have some special access. And they can connect the church to this secret knowledge. So Paul is saying, beware, don't make nobody spoil you. What they, they're trying to rob you, they're trying to take your, your, your goods, your possession. They want to loot, they want to run off with, with, with the, the blessings that you have. So don't let nobody spoil you. There's a lot of philosophy in the church, in the body of Christ. 
As I mentioned before, a lot of trips to heaven. Trip to heaven is just a philosophy, you know. <laughs> it's just they're trying to spoil us. <laughs> you know, with all of these different trips that people will say they have, and all of these different sightings of Jesus. You see, man, the Jesus come like Elvis these days, you know. You know, people always see Elvis some way, and, you know. That's the way how a lot of people always see Jesus and all of that. It's, 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 it's philosophy, and we can't be spoiled by these things. We can't be robbed by these things. Hallelujah. If God chose to manifest himself to somebody, to God be the glory. But I believe that if God should manifest himself to a person, most of the time in the Bible you see that person fall flat on their face. That person is so afraid. They figure after that they're going to die. You know, you know, the way how we have people explaining it today, man, they're so bo boisterous about the, the, the way how, oh man, I see Jesus, and man, I tell you, he was exciting, and they explain it, and oh man, there's no fear, there's no reverence in the way how they communicate it. It is a lie. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. When John saw Jesus, he fell flat on his face. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So we have to be careful. Brethren, God can speak to us in visions. God can speak to us in a dream. God can speak to us by a still small voice. God can speak to us in a literal way if He chooses to. If God chose, He can speak to us and we can, He can talk to us any way He chose. But brethren, it doesn't matter which way the Lord speaks to you. It is still subject to the Word of God. Any way God speaks to us, it is still subject to the Word of God. And, you know, it doesn't matter how God speaks to us, as I keep saying before, it is not on par with the Word of God. The Word of God is on a level by itself. And all other things fall beneath that. Dreams, visions trip to heaven, all of these different things fall beneath the Word of God. The Word of God is on a level by itself. So when these things come along, we have to judge them and we have to measure them by the Word of God. Praise the Lord. I don't say, Pastor, don't control the baby with the bathwater. Visions, God can speak to us through visions. God can speak to us through dreams. But you have to measure them by the Word of God. The Word of God is the, the measuring rod by which we measure all of these things. Praise the Lord. So, we have to beware. Don't allow anybody to spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit. Vain deceit, there is empty words. What they're saying is empty. There is no substance. Anything that is not in line with the Word of God got no substance. The Word of God has substance. And listen to what he said. After the tradition of men, tradition... Now we have good tradition. We have Christian tradition. Christian tradition that is handed down to us. Born again. Experience. Church attendance is a Christian tradition. All of these Christian traditions we have, we have to cherish them. But anything that is not from the Bible, that come down from generation to generation, that is not biblical, we cannot receive it. It is tradition. In Paul's time, the Jewish people, they want to um, flood the church, the church at Colossae, with all of their traditions. And Paul is warning the church and saying that you have to be on alert, be on guard for these men who want to uh, come into the church and spread uh, all of these traditions and want their tradition to be next, side by side with the Word of God. Nothing can be side by side with the Word of God. The Word of God is on a power by itself. It's on a level by itself. He said again, after the rudiment of the world, after the rudiment of the world here, what, what is taking place here is that the rudiment of the world is talking about spirits or angels. What they were saying back in that time is that the heavenly bodies is controlled by spirits and controlled by angels. And uh, these heavenly bodies, because they were controlled by spirits and controlled by angels, the heavenly bodies have a direct influence over the lives of people. And uh, they want to bring these beliefs in the church so that the people could have something extra. Don't just have Jesus, but you need to have the angels that control the heavenly bodies on your side. And Paul is warning them. 
That's why in our time today, we have the horoscopes. And we have the Ouija board. And there are people who believe in these things. But horoscope and Ouija board and all of these things, brethren, we can't bring them in the church. <laughs> you know, like planting people plant by the different moons and the half a moon and the quarter moon and the full moon. And all of these things, and they talk about the black cat, and if you see a black cat, and this and that. All of these things is worldly. We have to leave them outside. We can't bring them in the church. Can't bring them in the church. Doesn't matter, you know, what people may say. We have to stand by the Word of God. Your life cannot be directed by um, the, 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 the Ouija board, or your life cannot be directed by the horoscope. Some people don't leave the house unless they read that thing. And if it says not to go out, they're not going anywhere. You can't live by that. We have to live by the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So after, he said, after the rudiments of the world, heavenly bodies, don't, don't conduct your life, don't allow your life to be run by no heavenly bodies. You know, you get up, but I'm not in the right mood today, no? <laughs> you know, the sun or the moon, you know, and you talk about, oh, it's full moon. That's the reason why I'm getting on. So it doesn't matter how full the moon is. You're supposed to act right. The moon full, the moon half, the moon quarter. You have to behave yourself. Behave yourself. Hallelujah. Don't have nothing to do with the moon. Glory to God. By the power of God, we keep ourselves in line. Praise the Lord. Okay, the rudiments of the world are not after Christ. So, whatever we direct our life by, conduct ourselves by, it has to be after Christ. It has to be Bible-based. If it's not Bible-based, you can't take that to, 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 to conduct your life by. For in Him, in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Paul is... He's enforcing it, telling the Colossian church, in the Lord Jesus Christ, they don't need nothing else. All of the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Him, in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All of God's grace, all of God's mercy, all of God's power, all of God's forgiveness. All that God have is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything is in Him. And you see what it said there, bodily, what was happening there in, at the church at Colossae is that the false teachers, they did not believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. They believed that um, flesh or material things, the flesh matter was evil. So they didn't believe that Jesus came in the flesh. They believed that Jesus was just a spirit and he wasn't in the flesh. <laughs> that is a false prophecy, a, a false teaching. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they don't believe that Jesus came in the flesh. But Jesus, he was here in the flesh. The Bible said the word of God become flesh and dwell among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten son of God. When Jesus was here, he was God living in a human body. He was God living in a human body. And when he died, he died and he was resurrected and he was resurrected in a human glorified body. So right now in heaven, there is a human Jesus in heaven in a glorified body. Jesus have a human glorified body in heaven. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We give God thanks. So Paul was making sure that the people know that it's the same Jesus. Glory to God. The same one who was here. He have all the fullness of God dwelling in him bodily. And ye are complete in Him. So we don't need nothing else. Everything that we need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, you are complete in Him. You don't need no por pornography. You know, sometimes people say, boy, are you missing out on something, you know. <laughs> boy, are you missing out on something, you know. You're missing out. <laughs> you need a little pornography. Oh, maybe so they'll tell you. <laughs> maybe, boy, are you missing out on something here. You need maybe a, a little Viagra. But if you need Viagra, go and have it. <laughs> You're missing out on something. We're not missing out on nothing. <laughs> Everything that we need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Even a little Viagra. Jesus can recharge you, you know. Yes, sir. Jesus can recharge you if he needs to recharge you. So everything that we need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Glory be to God. Nothing is impossible. Praise God. Amen. So we are complete in Him, which is the head of all principalities. I'm going to close it. Jesus Christ is the head of all principalities. It means that all powers, there, there are Romans chapter 13 tell us that there is no power that is, that is not of God. All power is under the dominion and the control of God. And uh, even Satan, Satan, whatever power or authority or whatever power Satan has or whatever control he has, it is God who allowing him. Satan is on a leash. Satan is a dog, is like a dog on a leash. You see them dog, those um, Doberman dog or, you know, uh, what do you call it, those um, Rottweiler, they have them on a leash. You go out on the road or go in the park. I make sure I stay away from them. I, I'm not going to test to see how long the leash is. And this is what some people do in the testing Satan. He's on a leash, but they're testing him. But I, I think he, he could just reach as far as here. So I will go just up to this point and he's not going to catch me. You don't, don't test him. You have to stay away from him. The Bible says we must flee. We have to flee. Submit ourselves to God. We have to flee away from the devil. Run away from these things. Don't test him to see how far, you know, he, 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 the rope is or the chain is or whatever leash he's on. Stay away from Satan. Anything that is not godly, we need to stay away from it. Praise the name of the Lord. And when we do that, brethren, we will be able to conduct ourselves, walk in the light as he is in the light. And the Bible says we will have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. I want to encourage us as a church, let us be strong. Let us watch one another back. Let us fall in love with Jesus. Let us fellowship with him. Get to know him, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Run the race that is set before you, looking on to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. We'll sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. If anyone is in need of prayer, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to trust Him today, this is an opportune time for anyone to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus. Turn your life over to Him the Bible said, this is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you shall hear his voice, harden not your heart. Praise the Lord. Everything is completed today. Our salvation is completed. Jesus, on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. It is finished. Hallelujah. We are glad that everything is finished. Everything that we need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asks it, receive it. Him that seek it, find it unto him that knock it. It shall be opened unto him. God bless us today. Hallelujah. Brethren, let us feast upon the things that God has given to us. He has given us his words. Let us all oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. We give God thanks. We give him glory. We give him honor today. Glory to God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Glory to God. Father, we want to thank you today for your words. We want to thank you, Lord, because you have given us instruction. Lord, to be on guard. To beware. Lord, with all of the false prophets, false teachings that is going around today, Lord. God, help us to hold to the word of God. Help us, Lord, to be grounded. Help us, Lord, to be established. In the truth, the truth of your words, O oh God. Lord, we pray that, God, we will become hungry and thirsty for more of you. Lord, I pray that, Father, for a desire within our hearts, a spiritual... <coughs> Praise the Lord. We are happy to be here in God's house. Uh, God is still in the business of saving, delivering, and setting people free. And we thank God that we can all come together as his people and we can have a fun time in the house of the Lord. Today, we, I hope that we can bring the book of Romans to a close today. We started almost a year and a half ago 
doing a verse-by-verse study of the book of Romans, and today we find ourselves in Romans chapter 16, and I think we are going to pick up at verse 12, Romans chapter 16 and verse 12. I know this is a very difficult chapter to handle, especially some of these names uh, that is in this chapter that is very hard to pronounce, but all the chapters that is in the Bible is there for a specific purpose, and God will want, you know, His will is for us to go through the Word of God, because as we read the Word of God, there are all kinds of different nuggets of blessings in God's Word for us. So, we pick up today from chapter six, uh, 16, verse 12. We hope to bring it to an end. Praise the Lord. <coughs> and we bow our heads in prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, for your words today. Thank you, Lord, for the congregation of your people. Lord, as we are here to feed from your table, I pray that you'll bless us with manna from above. God, you'll grant us, O oh God, a spiritual hunger and a thirst within our hearts, O oh God, as we study your words there, Father. Make yourself known to us. God, I pray for a fresh anointing to teach the word of God. I pray for clarity, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, and revelation. Have thine own way in our midst there, Father, as we wait upon you today. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. In Romans chapter 16, as we discuss uh, two weeks ago, the Apostle Paul, he um, showed us the importance of fellowship with, with God's people and uh, the importance of um, greeting uh, the people of God. And he continued with this um, greetings that he's sending out to the, the people at Rome. He said, um, salute, it means to greet, embrace um, Typhina and tri- Triposa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labor much in the Lord. So here we see, as we said before, that in verse 12 here, it seems as though this was a twin Sister, sisters, that the Apostle Paul is sending out greetings to. And he, he said that they labor in the Lord. And uh, the interpretation of these two names is uh, dainty and uh, delicate. They, this, it seems as though these two sisters were two beautiful women. And in spite of the fact that they were, they, they were beautiful, delicate, dainty, they still find time to serve the Lord, to work for the Lord. And the Apostle Paul said that they labor for the Lord. And, uh, you know, as children of God, I want to encourage us today. Let us find time to labor for the Lord. Let us find time to work for the Lord. The Bible said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh, shall of the flesh reap destruction. But he that soweth to the Spirit, to love the Spirit, reap life everlasting. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to pay every man according to his work. God is going to reward us. Brethren, our work and our labor is not going to be in vain. Every sacrifice we make for God will be rewarded. And he said at the end of the verse, And salute the beloved precious. Persis. And this word here, it's, a, it's somebody, uh, it's a Persian person, it's a Persian woman. Uh, I guess she's probably from Iran, uh, that area. And the Apostle Paul, he is a Hebrew. And here we see a Hebrew man is sending out greetings to a, a Persian woman. And he's calling, out, calling her the beloved Persis. And uh, it shows us here that when we are in Christ... Every racial barrier will be broken down. You know, because when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we all have something in common. Praise God. It doesn't matter. You might be rich. You might be poor. You might be educated. You might be uneducated. It doesn't matter. We all are one in the Lord Jesus. We are one family. We belong to one 
family, and that is the family of God. Praise the Lord. And he said that which labor much in the Lord. So these women were laboring. They were working to the point where they were almost, you know, to drop, you know, to the ground. They, they, they labor for the Lord. They labor, you know, and they put effort into doing whatever they were doing for the Lord. Verse 13 said, Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Now, Bible interpreters believe that this guy here, Rufus, he is the son of this man, Simon the Syrian. Simon, the man who was compelled by the Roman soldier to carry the cross of Jesus. Anybody ever read about that? This uh, black man who was compelled by the Roman soldier when Jesus was going up to Calvary with the cross and the cross was too so heavy for him. And they compelled this black uh, man to take the cross of Jesus to help him to carry the cross. And it is believed that this guy here, Rufus, because in the book of Luke, Luke mentioned two sons uh, of uh, this guy, um, Simon, which was Alexander and Rufus. And Bible interpreters believe that this person that is mentioned here, Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine, is the son of Simon. So here we see that Simon, he had a prominent role in the church because of the example that he saw in the Lord Jesus Christ. This man, Simon, he had a close um, connection. He had a close contact with the Lord Jesus because if, if it is true, according to what they are saying, that this is uh, the son of the man who carried the cross of Jesus, it means that the father here, Simon, he was close, he was closely connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible interpreters believe that this family had a prominent role in the body of Christ during that time. So what this is saying to us, that the example that we set for our children is very important. If this is the Simon, if this Rufus is the son of Simon who carried the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it means that Simon set a good example to his son. And here we see Paul is saying, and his mother and mine. So not only um, um, Rufus was setting an example, also his mother, which would be the wife of Simon, the one who helped Jesus with the cross. His wife was still alive, but apparently Simon, he passed away. But his son and his wife were still staying firm in the Lord. Glory be to God. Verse 14 uh, there is some names here. I guess uh, those of you who have plans to make um, babies, you probably could go over some of these verses to pick out some names here to give to your kids. Uh, it said, Salute, uh, uh, Sintracrus, uh, <laughs> Philly, Philion, Hamas, <laughs> Pat Robus, <laughs> Hamas, and the brethren which are with them. So here we see that these guys here, they probably were leaders in the church and they had. Um, maybe they had a church in their home and Paul, even though he probably never get to meet this, these guys he was sending out um, greetings to them uh, salute uh, Phy Phy Phylogius and uh, Julius, Nereus and his sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with them this is another group that they believe it was a house church and the apostle Paul is sending out greetings to them he said, salute one another with a holy kiss. The, uh, the churches of Christ salute you. So back in those days, it was an honorable thing to greet somebody with a kiss. You know, there was nothing sexual about it. Uh, it was a sign of respect. When you meet somebody that you love and you respect, you kiss them on their forehead, on both sides of their cheeks. And you will notice that even in some culture today, <laughs> you know, the Italians, they have a way of kissing people. Even after the, they already kiss somebody, they will still kill them. You know, you see that in the mafia movie. You know, it, that's how they, they operate. They kiss people. It's a sign of respect. And uh, today, we, we are not so big about the kissing thing. That is not to say we can't kiss somebody on the cheek. 
But uh, uh, in our time today, we greet people, we hug them, and we shake their hands. But if you're ever going to give somebody a kiss, the Bible says it must be a holy kiss. It means that there can't be any sexual connection to um, greeting somebody with a kiss. It's got to be a holy kiss. And, you know, today some people don't want to make that kind of connection. Some people just want you to shake their hands. We have to respect people's wishes. If somebody just wants a shake hand and they don't want to embrace, they don't want to hug, you know, if you go to somebody and you notice that they're not big on hugging, you don't go back to them and you say, well, you know, I'm going to make sure that she hugged me. No, you don't have to do that. Somebody don't want to hug, you just shake their hands. But one thing I'd like to say, somebody coming to shake your hand, especially in our church, after, you know, we finish service and we are greeting each other and you're talking with somebody and somebody comes to greet you, you know, kind of interrupt the conversation a little bit and give some attention to your brother or your sister and give them a good greeting. Somebody push out their hand to shake your hand. Don't let them take the full weight of your hand and your hand so heavy. You know, somebody shaking your hand, put some strength into your hands. You know, you don't have to be a man. I like the way Brother Lewis does give you a good greeting. He holds you and he shakes your hand. I, 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 I'm not saying that is the way that the ladies will do it. But if you, somebody come to shake your hand, you know how many times you go to shake somebody's hand and you just take the big weight of their hand and just... Somebody come to give you a greeting. Shake their hand and give them a form handshake. Show them that you love them. Praise the name of the Lord. Greet them. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, greet the brother or the sister with a holy kiss. If you don't want to kiss, you can embrace or you shake somebody's hand and make them feel, appreciate. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. He said in verse 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses uh, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Here we see Paul, he was talking about greeting with a holy kiss. He, talk, he sent out so much greetings and he said to embrace the brother, brethren and stuff like that. But here he's talking about people who uh, are causing division in the body of Christ. He said, now I beseech you brethren, Mark them which cause division. The word they mark means to keep an eye on them. You ever watch um, soccer, playing soccer, and somebody, uh, you're marking somebody, or in basketball, you, you have to mark somebody. Anywhere that person goes, you're behind them, and you're keeping your eyes on them. You make sure that you have your eyes on them. And uh, Paul is saying here that people who cause division in the church, we have to mark them. People who cause um, separation, who caused clique to be set up in the church. In the church, we ought not to have clique. We have your, your special group that you associate with and the special group of people who you, you are close with. And the other group, you're not so close with them. We ought not to have that in the church. That is a barrier and we need to break that down. Hallelujah. We ought not to be causing any division in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. People who cause division in the church, who cause strife and animosity in the church, the Apostle Paul is saying we have to mark them. Praise the Lord. Keep your eyes on them. You've got to be careful with them. Hallelujah. In the church of God, we have to love one another. We have to bear each other's burden. The Bible said if a brother or sister is overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So not only people, the ordinary member who might want to spread strife and uh, cause division in the church, we have to be careful with, but we have to be careful with people who want to spread false doctrine. People who teach things that is not in line with the word of God. The, da- the most dangerous thing that we have today in the body of Christ is false teachers. They're, you see, false teachers uh, was outside the church during the time of the Apostle Paul. But today, the false teachers is not outside the body of Christ. The false teachers is right in the church. All of these different doctrines that we have today, 
the prosperity gospel right in the church that is coming from false teachers. The, the, the gospel that God wants everybody healed. And if you're not healed, if you're sick and you're not healed, it means that you have something wrong in your life. That is a false teaching. We have to avoid those kinds of teaching, brethren. Those teaching is not in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. So it said in verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. So Paul is saying that people who spread false teaching, false doctrine, they are not servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not people who surrender, who become slave to the Lord Jesus Christ. What he's saying is that they are serving themselves. They are serving their own bellies. And that is so true. The prosperity gospel preachers today, they are in it for themselves. They are in it to get themselves higher, to get themselves a bigger home, you know, better cars, more money in the bank, more things that they can boast about. They are in it so that they can get bigger rings on their hands and their fingers. You will see when they're preaching, they will flash it. <laughs> and if you look carefully, like you want to blind your eyes. That is what they are in it for. And brethren, you can identify somebody who is a false teacher. Anybody who you see want to boost offering all the time. Any minister who keep on asking for money and keep on boosting offering all the time and keep on asking for a, 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 a seed faith or a seed gift and to sow seed, they are false prophets. That is how uh, the early church used to identify false teachers. In the time of the apostles, if you are a preacher and you go around and you start to beg for money, they already know that you are a false teacher. And it's the same thing that is happening today. The gospel of Jesus Christ has received a black eye from most of the television preachers today because so many unsaved people, when they look at the television and they see these guys who keep begging for money, they don't want to hear anything about Christianity. Christianity received a black eye from these prosperity preachers. Hallelujah. I hope we don't have anybody in this church here today who is making out their monthly um, check and sending it out to these um, guys on television. You know, saying that you're supporting these people. I remember years ago we used to have a lady who used to come to our, um, our church. And, you know, when she giving an offering, she give her $20, you got to make sure to give her back 15 She's only giving 5 But every month she making out her check and she's sending it to her television preacher. Brethren, we have to be careful. Hallelujah. We have to know what we are doing. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by these men on television. You don't have to make out no prayer request and send it to nobody on TV for them to pray for you, for God to do something in your life. If I have to write down something on a piece of paper, mail it, it might take a few weeks before it gets to that guy, whoever he is, so that he can open that and put it on whatever altar he has, for God to hear him and God to hear me and to answer my prayer. Brethren, you can pray right where you are. You can agree. You alone can go before God and put your petition before God. And God can hear you. I don't have any special, uh, I don't have any special favor where God is concerned. I don't have to pray for anybody here in any special way for God to hear them. Hallelujah. We have so many people today that we put them on a pedestal. And if they don't pray, nothing not going to happen. Brethren, sometimes some of these people who we hold so high, who have the high name, the bishops and the apostles and all of these guys that we so highly, you know, exalted. Maybe when they pray, God not even listening to them. Maybe it's the ordinary man or woman who we don't recognize. Those are the people who have the clean hands and the pure heart. It's not the person who have the name. It's not the person who have the title that God is going to listen to. Is the person who have the clean heart. Our heart must be clean. The Bible said if we regard iniquity in our heart, God is not going to hear us. Hallelujah. So many of these guys that we highly 
esteem. How many of them have so many different wives? Some of them right now, they're going through divorce. They can't even get their own family together. And you see them from time to time, you know, praying this big powerful prayer to straighten out other people's life. Could you imagine you can straighten out how much people, um, their life, and you can straighten out your own life? Hypocrite! Hallelujah! You gotta first take the beam out of your own eye, the Bible said, before you can see clearly enough to take the moat out of somebody's eye. Tell those television preachers, take the beam out of their eyes. And before they can start, pick out the little moat that we have in our eyes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I'm so glad that I'm not in ministry for anybody's money. That's the reason why I can preach like this. I am not in ministry to get money from nobody. I got my garbage job. I am proud to be a garbage man. You know, to do my work. It doesn't matter. I still have another 10 years to work. And I'll work by the grace of God. I don't depend on anybody to bring their money here. So that I can buy any expensive vehicle. Or buy any big house or whatever. No. If you see me have an expensive vehicle. It means that I work for it. If I decide to get rid of that house that we have. And move to a different one. It's because I am I'm putting my money into it. not going to be the church money. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we buy into this thing that, you know, the preacher, you know, he is the man of God and he must have to have the best. You are a child of God. How come, how come it is not working for those who are in the pew? You know, the prosperity gospel only works for the man and the woman that is up on the pulpit. It is not working for the little guy. I am not going to believe it until I see... People down in the congregation, it start to have an effect on them. They start to become multi-millionaires. The only multi-millionaires you have in the church is the preachers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Our responsibility here is to take care of the bills of this church, the mortgage and the utilities and stuff like that. We take care of that. We are not here to make anybody rich. This is not a retirement plan for Pastor Duncan. So many people today go into ministry and the only reason they go into ministry is because they want to have some kind of retirement plan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where we are, verse 18, is it? 19. Okay, so uh, Paul said that in 18... For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. They are in it for themselves, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. All of these guys, they, they like um, um, snake aisle salesmen. They have smooth words, and they have a way with words. And when they, they speak, oh man, I tell you, I just like to hear him. When, I, when he speaks, he makes my head giddy. And he makes me get goosebump. <laughs> it, he's a snake oil salesman. <laughs> Brethren, sometimes these guys that have these smooth words, those are not the one who is anointed. You know, a lot of times it's the guy who can't even bring out the word that the Holy Spirit is really working with. But we don't want those guys. We want to listen to them. We want to listen to those that have the smooth kind of words. Oh, you know, you give a hundred dollars. God is going to give you a thousand. <laughs> I know you. I could see you down there. You have, you have a thousand dollars in your, in, in your, in your pocket there. God wanted to sow a seed of faith. And brothers and sisters, when you sow that seed of faith, God is going to multiply you. That house, that dream house that you want to get, God is going to bless you. You're going to get that house. You're not going to get that house until you give that thousand dollars. And see how many people, see how many people down the congregation pulling out their, their pocketbooks, their, their checkbooks. Sometimes and they don't, they don't even have it in the bank and they're making out these checks because they, they, they bought what these snake oil salesmen are saying to them. Hallelujah. Nobody not going to fool me. I'm not going to take the bait. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Not taking the bait. It's not working. Verse 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf 
but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Paul is saying that the church at Rome was a very obedient church. They were obeying the word of God. So he still, even though they were obedient, he still wanted us to warn them, you know, in regards to these snake oil salesmen. He said, when they come around, don't allow yourself to be um, naive and you're gullible to them. And because of the fact that, you know, you are Christian, you have to believe everything. Brethren, I, you don't have no obligation to believe nothing from anybody unless it measures up to the word of God. If something doesn't have the stamp of the word of God, if it's not, if it cannot be verified by the word of God, it is garbage and we have to throw it out. And so many of us, we tell ourselves, well, you know, he's a man of God. And look at that big Bible that he has. And you know how much people he have on his mailing list. And because of that, we believe everything that they said. But if it's not in the word of God, it is garbage. He doesn't care. I don't care who say it. It is garbage. Praise the Lord. Don't be fooled. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 20, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. You see, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, is calling false teachers and false doctrine. He's saying that false teachers is being operated by the devil. False doctrine is from the devil. The false doctrine that these men are preaching the false prosperity message that they're preaching that God wants everybody rich. Paul is saying that they're only doing it to fill their own, be their own belly, their own stomach. And he's saying here that it is not from the Lord. So what he's saying, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan. The word they shot, they should be quickly under your feet. What he's saying is that if you stand firm on the word of God, the, the false doctrine, the false teaching that these people are preaching will come to, to naught. It will be defeated. All we need to do is to stand against the false teaching. Don't give in to false teaching and false teaching is going to fall to pieces. You don't send no money to these guys that are crying out for your money and you see how fast they go off a, off a television. They, they say that all the time. You know, if you don't support me, this, I would have, we'd have to close this station. So let them close this station. Let them come off this station. If God so wants them to be on that station, He's going to provide. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, quickly. Satan will be bruised and our feet. We don't have to go around chasing no demon. All we need to do is to stand up on the word of God. You stand up on God's word. You're not giving up. You're not giving in. You hold fast to what you believe. You hold on to the genuine thing. We don't have to chase down any demons. We don't have to buy all of the demonic books that they have in the, in the, in the bookstore. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is to get a hold of the genuine thing. I keep saying to you, the way how um, the government will train um, their, 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 their agents to detect um, counterfeit bills, counterfeit American dollars, counterfeit um, Canadian dollars, the way how they train them, they give them the original Canadian currency, the original American currency, and these um, agents, they will sit for months and hours and whatever time it needs for them to examine the real thing. They will watch it upside down, crossways. They dream about it. They sleep and they think about it. So every time a counterfeit bill come across them, they don't have to go and investigate every counterfeit bill that is in the world to know them. All they have to do is to know the true thing. Brethren, all we need to do is to know the Word of God. When you know the Word of God, every false teaching that come against you, you're going to be able to identify it. When Jehovah's Witness knock on my door, as soon as they open up their mouth and they start telling me that Jesus is the brother of Lucifer, I know that is not true. <laughs> when they tell the Jehovah's Witness start telling me that you can't be born again <laughs> and all of that, and we have to wait for a better world that is coming, you know, I know that is false teaching. When Joseph Smith and the Mormon people come around and they start telling me that we are going to be God, None of us are not going to be any God. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're not going to be any God. You know right away that that is false teaching. 
So what we need to do to identify the false teachers and the false teaching, we need to know the Word of God. Examine the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet quickly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. God, grace be with you, brethren. Glory to God. Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, and Jason, and so Sipitus, my king's man, salute you. Paul continued to salute. He's sending out a shout out to all of his brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, he said, I, Tertius, uh, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. So Paul, um, from time to time, he used different people to um, write for him, to dictate for him. He used different scribes to, to, to give out the epistle for him. Praise God. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, salute you. So this guy Gaius, apparently he had a church in his house. He provided the accommodation so that Paul can have a, um, the people in Rome can have a church in their home. It's an honorable thing to have a church in your house. It doesn't matter where I go. I'm going to have some kind of prayer meeting, some kind of Bible study in my home. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Eratus, the Chamberlain of the city, salute you. So this guy was a treasurer. He was a high official. And, you know, sometimes we think it's only poor people alone um, associate with Christianity. There's a lot of people in the world today that is rich and they are born again. So it's not, Christianity is not just for poor people. Christianity is not just for uneducated people. Sometimes when you talk about God, people think, well, it's only because you don't have nothing else to hold on to. So you have to take God. And it's because you're uneducated, you're not learned, you're not schooled. Uh, but look at this. The Bible is saying that this guy, he was the treasurer of the city. And he was a born again person. Sending out Paul, sending out sh shout outs to this guy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. So here Paul is saying, the, now to him that is able, uh, now to him that is a power to establish you. It is only one person that could establish us. Make our feet stand on that solid rock, the solid foundation. It is God. God is the only one who can establish you. You want to be established as a young person. You stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we try to seek the favors of men. Men can't do anything for us. The only person that can take you where, from where you are and, and take you to the place where you want to go is God who is going to do it. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. You see, very important. We have to preach Jesus Christ. Bible never tell me to preach prosperity. Never tell me to preach no healing. It tell me to preach Jesus Christ. When you preach Jesus Christ, people are going to be prosperous. When you preach Jesus Christ, people are going to get healed. Hallelujah. According to the revelation, the mystery. Mystery is something that is hidden. But it's now revealed. The gospel was a mystery. It was hidden, but it is revealed to us now through Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why we don't have no excuse today not to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You know, when I was growing up in St. Vincent, it didn't have a lot of gospel church. The only church that was around in my time when I was growing up in Loman, St. Vincent, the only church that I can remember, it was the Baptist. The <coughs> That was the kind of people who we have in those days. We didn't have no Bible teaching and preaching church. It seems as though the gospel was hid. But now, all over the place, you have churches that is preaching and teaching the gospel. Why? Because the mystery is being revealed. And today, as the mystery is revealed, people don't have no excuse when you stand before God, you won't be able to say, Lord, there was nobody in my area that was preaching the Word of God. The Word of God has been preached all over. It's on the television. It's on the radio. Everywhere you go, the Word of God is being proclaimed. The Bible said, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you shall hear His voice, harden not your heart. In closing, 
Praise the Lord. He said, Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scripture of the prophets. We have the scripture of the prophet. This is the important thing in our life, brethren. The word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the true um, prophecy that we have to hold to. Hallelujah. According to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations by the obedience of faith to God, only wise, be glory to Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. We are so glad today, brethren, that we have this gracious opportunity, this gracious privilege that is given to us by God, whereby we can get to know God for ourselves. We can receive salvation. The plan of salvation is being provided for by the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, each of us, any person that is here today, you can become a beneficiary to the gift of salvation. Uh, the Bible tells us if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. You're here today and you're not saved. You can leave this place a new person. Any man or woman who is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. Praise the Lord. We will sing, You deserve the glory and the honor. At the end of this song, if you are in need of prayer and you feel you want to come up to the altar so that we can have a prayer with you, you can do that after that. There is no one else no like one, you, Lord. Lord. No one. Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer thank as we bring Jesus. our time of worship to thank an end you, today. Jesus. God, we want to thank you, thank you Lord. because there is no one else yes, like you, Lord. God, God I Lord. thank you today because you have thank you, make Jesus. yourself thank known. You, you reveal yes. the gospel that was hidden. It was a mystery. Thank you, but, oh God, it become revealed in the Lord you, Jesus Lord. Christ. Yes, God. And, Father God, I'm so glad that yes. this is the appointed time. Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if we shall hear your voice, yes. the scriptures declare, harden not your heart. God, I want to thank you because a day of reckoning is coming when each of us will have to stand before you, Lord. And every message, God, every time the word of God is being preached and being proclaimed, and oh God, we refuse to listen and we refuse to heed the word of God. Lord, you are recording angels. Even today, this message that was proclaimed, and oh God, it seems as though it fall on stony grounds. Lord, your recording angels is recording. And, oh God, the time of reckoning is coming. But I pray, oh God, Lord, we know it is not your will that any should perish, but all should have life and have life more abundantly. God, those who are here today who don't have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, as they leave this place, their Father God, you will trouble their hearts. God, you will speak to them in their home during this week, Lord, on their bed, Lord. God, wherever they go, I pray that you'll just make yourself known to them, O oh God. Hallelujah. Reveal the plan of salvation. Show them your salvation. God, we pray for our loved ones, our sons and our daughters. Our, O oh God, brothers and sisters, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Remember them, Lord. We place them in your hands, O oh God, for a breakthrough in the lives of our young children, O oh God, our sons and our daughters, those who have taken the gospel for granted. Lord, remember them today. Save them in the name of Jesus. Save young men and young women. O oh God, set them free from the powers of sin. Break the shackles of sin from the lives of your sons and your daughters, O oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you. Be with us throughout this week. Go with us yes, on our journey, you, Lord, to our homes. Those who are seeking a job, be with, be with them, Lord. Those who are sick, be with them, Lord. Those in, in the hospital, Lord, remember them today, Lord. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Those who are discouraged, those who are despondent, Lord. Those who are weak, oh, God. Those who are seeking for an answer. Lord, I pray that you'll have mercy today. Bless us, we ask of you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your Son. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace to us all. My way of announcement.